And theoretically, theoretically, we yeah, should we're live. Be... Are we? Why has it not come up at my end? Well, I mean, I'm watching it on YouTube, so you oh, can go ahead and introduction. Why... How do I look? Like a fat yeah. asshole. Yes, yeah, it's good. It's good to know that we're uh, keeping up the usual standards that people have become accustomed to on this channel. Yeah, it looks like you're ready to go. We wouldn't like. We wouldn't want to drop it, son. Not at all. But it could be a biggie tonight. You never know who's going to join in. I mean, no, no. only but the other Paul day. Lynn's not here. Mate, I haven't seen Paul in a while. I'm drinking these just for him. What is that? Michelob Ultra. Oh, it's a nice beer. It's the low carb stuff because I got to make 242 for uh, two and a half weeks from now. When it, who are you pulling then? Is that the Jagger's match? Yeah, Austin Jagger's left handed, but Jamie Staken right handed. So in Ontario, I'm ranked second at 242 pounds. Okay. And Jamie this wants is, my We're rank. on the left arm now, yeah? What's we're left, that? That's left-handed. No, Austin right is left-handed. Okay. Yeah, so Jamie Staken, who's an Ontario guy, he wants my spot on the rankings. Right. And uh, there's nobody else for me to pull. I can't go up from number two. Mm. But so, you're, getting, you're, getting, you're extremely active at the moment, though, Evan. I'm always sounds, active. Yeah, I've never like taken a break. Apart from when you got COVID and ducked out of school by match, but... Other than that. Well, then I just started whooping some ass locally again. Like I've, I've never stopped. COVID didn't slow my training or anything else. I'm. You didn't get any uh, really bad effects from COVID then. Uh well, I, I did have COVID over Christmas. Okay. And it was like the easiest flu I've ever had. You know, if you rate the flu on you know ten being the worst and mm. zero being you're healthy, COVID was like a four on that flu scale. It didn't, yeah. it just made me real achy. I was still up every day. I'd make breakfast, lunch, and supper for the kids. Just in between, I'd be like, real bags, like, okay, hey, daddy's going to lay down again for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I was still able to get up, cook, clean, eat, do my daily routine. I'm just sore and tired all the time. Like a lot of skinny uh, bears, but with sore joints. Yeah. A lot of joint aches, like yeah. knees, ankles, hips, everything. Yeah. I have that a lot, but. Mostly, it's due to carrying around a ridiculous amount of weight. Because I'm around a, uh, right now, I'm I think I'm about a hundred and eleven kilos, which is my pretty much my heaviest all time body weight. What's that in pounds? It's above two foot. Well, two forty two is one ten. Ah, yes. So I'm like two. Yeah, I'm like two forty four, two forty five, and that's the heaviest I've ever been in my life. So we're like the same size. You're a little bigger. Uh, might be a little taller. I'm six one. But uh, if I was Ryan Bowen, I'd be claiming six one and a half. You know what I mean? Because that's important. So that's yeah, I've never been six one. I maxed out at six foot, and since then I've been uh, coming down a little bit. So it sounds like you're the bigger guy naturally, though. I think because I'm I, I should be if I wasn't a fat knacker, I should be my, like in good shape, eighty five kilos. And that is in pounds. 187. 187 I mean you could make an argument for 198 you know what I mean yeah. if I was if I had if I had abs 85 kilos back in the day there was a time Evan it's been a bloody long I hit that guy though uh well then you're bigger than me because for me to get like abs and in like good shape like fight shape kind of thing I'm like 185 walking okay yeah very similar then yeah very similar but uh so got a big one lined up for you tonight if I can make it happen Evan Obviously, working on the bet that we had the other week and trying to get you into some nice, entertaining matches. The Wait, we had a bet? Have spoken. Yeah, we bet. Of course we did. I said that, you know, you, you would not be able to smack the out of Frodo Hoagland right-handed, Nicholas Nanestad left-handed, and you said you would do it on but one on each arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely do that. Uh, I don't recall a bet, though. No, we haven't actually agreed on anything yet, so we need to sort that out, you know. Um, but it wouldn't be anything bad. I'm not like, you know, Aussie arm wrestler or Uncle John or anything like that. I wouldn't like ask you to shave your beard off. It's a thing of beauty. So, yeah, well, uh, I'd never be allowed to take that bet. The missus would uh, not yeah, be she'd okay leave with you. it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a good thing. Nobody wants you missus. And then my kids leave. hate me. You don't want that either. Two bad no. things. I no. mean, yeah, neither of those are good. But... I genuinely believe bloody entertaining matches, mate. 
I'd love to take those matches. Those guys are fantastic arm wrestlers. Like that's the kind of match that really gets you excited to train for. Yeah. And I don't like training. I love arm wrestling. I arm wrestle all the time, but training outside of being on the table is uh, not something I enjoy at all. Now, there was a time, though, not long back, when you were saying that, I think it was actually pre-schoolboy match, that you were going to be doing a bit more dedicated training. Did, did you plan to involve Jim in that? Were you going to be doing any lifting? or? Well, not necessarily the gym. Um, I've got uh, a pile of injuries from over the course of life of being an animal mm-hmm. that uh, don't like real gym lifts. But arm wrestling-specific lifts, um, I, go, I was over at my buddy's house, every day where he's got the big pulley cable system set up and all the weights Mm -hmm. and just a ton of hand and wrist and all that stuff. Yeah. I was actually working out every day, getting ready for school boy. So you were going for it as hard as you ever, ever have in your life, really? I have never trained that hard in my life for anything. Wow. Not arm wrestling related. (laughs) I like your work. Yeah. Now I I wanted to, with a couple of things I wanted to sort of bounce by you uh, this evening. Firstly, we have to cover off what happened yesterday with everyone. I mean, John was live twice yesterday, the first time with Aussie Arm Wrestler, and they talked about nothing else really other than the rule scenario and issues that were cracking off with Devon's little piece. I know Ryan Bowen. There's a song, and I think it was covered recently by Ronan Keating. You probably don't know who that is, but he was a member of Boys Own. And the song was You Say It Best, when you say nothing at all. And I can tell you, when I watched Ryan Bowen's piece breaking that down, and I'm not sure he said a fucking thing that I understood. And yet I listened every moment of that. It was like 12 minutes of him breaking stuff down. And at the end, he said, I think that unpacked it. And it did not unpack it. Listening to Ryan talk is not on uh, a list of things I ever do. And that's a goddamn shame because I was trying to get him on here tonight. Well, well, that's uh, that sucks because listen to that guy talk. Though, is just he, he actually sent me a message and he said, "Can't make the show. Desperately need sleep." Because I think he did like three shows in the middle of the night. One of which was that show that I mentioned. I'd be more likely to tune in to watch him taking a nap than I am to listen to him give a breakdown about anything. Did you guys get on when he came out for the bottom eight? What do you mean? You know, did you get on? Did you like, did you think, yeah, Stella dude, nice guy. Or did you think massive? No, no. I, I actually like hanging out with Ryan. Mm-hmm. Ryan's, he's a good dude. No, I think Ryan so. on YouTube just irritates the fuck out of me. I talk to Ryan all the time and like, you know, we text and shit all the time. I like Ryan. I consider him a friend of mine, but <laughs> listening to him talk on YouTube, there's a big difference between being a YouTube guy and who you are as a person outside of that. Yeah. Right. Like, on here, it's chatting with you. I'm kind of just me. You know, I don't turn the volume up to 10 and just be that loud, abrasive asshole that I like to be on YouTube for fun. Mm. So, you know, like Evan and Ryan get along great, but that blue idiot on YouTube and bad company don't see eye to eye at all. Yeah, different dudes, very mm-hmm. different people. So what do you think about, I mean, obviously we didn't get a chance to really touch on this, but the announcement was was sort of uh, at least verbal announcement, I should say. There's nothing, there's no dates as far as I'm aware. But the announcement that Alan Ford, who obviously a good friend of yours and a solid arm wrestler, could be facing Ryan Blue Bowen, and I know that I, I mentioned that to to Devon, and he was back in blue. He thought that Ryan would give him major issues. Is that something you agree with me? No, no. Um, I think Devon's just ignorant <clears throat> on this matter right now. Um, just not being pulling Alan. Well, he's been pulling Allen, but uh, Devin is fucking ridiculous right now. Like, when he comes to train with the Valley crew, and you've got me, Allen, my older brother is just enormous right now. He's like 280 and just working really fucking hard. Yeah. Right? And he's not like, he doesn't have abs, but he ain't fat either. Like, he's in the Army. He's in good shape. He's just 6'3", like 280 pounds. And he's strong as a bull, and he's been arm wrestling hard lately. So you got me, Adam, Alan Ford, Brendan Mulvihill, Porkchop mm-hmm. was down here. And Devin can't feel us. Like, you can't tell his effort level being any difference between any of us and one of, like, the new 140-pound teenagers that just joined the team. 
Yeah. Like, it, he, it's disgusting. Heading to a different place entirely. So when you take the Alan Ford that uh, has been arm wrestling for the last two years or not arm wrestling for the last two years, mm. and you compare that to what he is right now, now that he's training hard, he wants this bowling match, and he's, he's not showing up to lose, I'll tell you that. No. I myself, I can really feel that difference of him putting it together and, like, all of the work he's putting in. Yeah. Devin can't tell the fucking difference between what he is now and what he was six months ago. So he just assumes after the Levon thing, when Devin becomes like a normal person again, mm -hmm. and he stops with this nothing but eating, sleeping, and training regimen that he's doing, yeah. then uh, he'll have a much better idea. But for me, what I feel from Alan, I like Alan's style against Ryan. I like where are they going to go? I think Alan's got it. I do. Do you think it's a good match, mate? Do you think because, obviously, the clue's in the title, Hitman. He's the guy that used to crack people, and he would gain enough to finish. Right. Now, if the match stops, do you think Alan has enough in the tank? I, 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 the reason I'm going there is because the last time we spoke, you were saying, oh, Alan now is an entirely different animal to the man he used to be, that hard right. hitter. And now he's got a lot more grunt. If the match stops, he's got a lot more red line. Do you think he's got enough to deal with Ryan, who really that's Ryan's game. He wants to put the brakes on. He's not particularly quick, you know. He wants to put the brake on and he wants to drag you into deep water. Do you think that he could uh, still mix it with Bowen if the match stops? Well, it all depends on where the match stops. Ryan has got some really, really good sticky spots mm. and he knows how to adjust. And even more so than just the adjusting, he knows how to clamp it down and not allow either of you to adjust. Yeah. Just like with anti-pressures, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't get a break in the pressure because he's not coming at you. He's coming away from you. And uh, I got to turn that off. It's a very light-hearted tone you've got there, Evan. Uh, yeah, it's whatever's on that phone. My phone broke and like... I'm kind of poor, so I just got, like, the cheapest fucking phone you can get, and I literally smashed the screen on it the day I got it. Oh, that's bad when that happens. Being so, there. like, I could barely see the screen to, like, try. I, I'm not setting new ringtones. I can't. I can barely no, read. Yeah, not your thing. Either way, with Ryan, if it stops, it depends on where it stops. I think Alan is going to have the advantage in making the adjustments. Once again, that depends on how it stops. Mm -hmm. um, but if Alan gets hand control and Ryan separated, I don't think Ryan's going to be able to get a stopped match, even if his elbow is 144% stronger than it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan is, Alan has done really good in stop matches against Todd Zilla, where Todd gets his hand taken and he's trying to push through forward and he just can't. He's yeah. done matches with RVJ where they're stuck in that hook and fighting back and forth. Um, yeah, Allen's really good in a stop match too. Just everybody just remembers way back when, when Allen would either flash you or lose, mm -hmm. but he's really evolved over the years. Yeah. It'd be uh, interesting to see it. We've had a super chat in from Sap the B, John Brzezink's biggest fan and probably Devin Larratt's biggest hater. And he's put, Neil, would you rematch Alan after the recent statements about your last match? Um, would I rematch Alan? Probably not, because there's no need to, uh, purely and simply because of the fact that I'm retired and Alan is still active, mate. So I don't expect it to be a great match these days. If it was, Alan would need to retire. Well, me and you should pull then, because we're the same size. There we go. Better match. I need right to, after I whooped the shit out of uh, when you beat when you beat Froder on one arm and Nana start on the other, you can grab onto my third arm and I'll fight you with that one. <laughs> nice, mate. Yeah, it sounds. See, I haven't had an awful like that for a long time for a man in a beard, but you know, yeah, I've still got the twitch from prison. All I can say is, Sap, I'd need to be arm wrestling again before I start taking matches, mate. If I uh, if I get arm wrestling again, there's a lot of people I'd like to arm wrestle. But to be honest, it'd be more guys that I haven't stop arm wrestling. Sorry, mate. How do you stop arm wrestling? Uh, purely and simply, I've enough hours in the day. Just 
if you're going to arm wrestle, I want to train to arm wrestle. I want to be ready to arm wrestle. I want to be competing. My my sort of um, whole ethos around arm wrestling was movement, technique, pulling regularly. Not necessarily training weights in the gym, but I want to be on the table regularly. I simply when don't was the last do it time anymore. you were out of practice? So, last time I went to a practice. Yes. Seven years ago. Something like that. Yeah. Seven? Yeah, six, seven years ago. I pulled the British a few years ago, but I didn't train for it. I just pulled it. Just showed up and arm wrestled. But I ain't I ain't trained actively for arm wrestling with any yeah, with any interest for I don't know, between five and seven years. That's well, crazy. Very I, I don't get how somebody could arm just wrestling, just stop not arm practicing. Wrestling. Yeah, it's I used to have a crew of guys that I trained with very regularly. Don't, as I say, at the moment. Uh, you got to remember, I've been in the sport for so many years, and gave every single ounce to training myself, to being involved, to being deeply embedded in it in every way. Right now, my aspirations were more around trying to get the sport to a different place. Uh, obviously, you can see the results of that. Hopefully, it's made an impression over the last few years. Yeah, um, I just don't. And that's where how could you be at arm wars with all these dudes around arm wrestling and not even get mm. on the table with people? It would have been nice to have time to, mate. When I'm at the events, obviously, I'm the organizer of the event, so I'm very, very deeply embedded in the event. Actually, ironically, the story with, with Alan that was very much the story that day. The reason I said no, I didn't want to pull Alan in the first instance was I've been there at 6 a.m. setting up the goddamn stage, so you don't, and then commentating all day, running the show, organizing the matches. My mind's elsewhere. So I didn't really want that. I don't want to arm wrestle. It's just that you're not. I haven't gone to arm wrestle. I, I wasn't there to arm wrestle. I prefer to arm wrestle in an event that I'm not organizing, running, commentating. It We're sucks. about to go right back down that rabbit hole because that's no, not the story I heard at all. Honestly, I've heard from plenty of arm wrestlers don't. that were there that it was you asking for the match, not Alan. And we actually yeah, but have all people three in of the them. chat but that all have been three messaging of them, me privately Evan, saying they watched hookers. the video. And they see the ref wink at you. Okay. While saying, I got the load. While he's giving me a little tickle under the table, like. Well, you can't see that. So your editor's no, did well, I kept that off they, camera. They I mean, stuff. you know, if you're going to pull some dodgy stuff like that, you got to make sure that the camera can't pick it up, Evan. It might be a schoolboy error, you know. Well, you were uh, not as good as you used to be. You didn't have Jason doing this stuff for you then. No, Jason's come on the scene recently. I mean, if, if Jason was around there, I could I would have probably kept it in there and just made it extremely cinematic. You know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff you need in there. But it's difficult to make something entertaining when it was that easy. So anyway, let, let's let's leave it because it's not going to do myself or Alan any good. And we've got far more important things to talk about. I mean, sap the bee. Uh, hope that answers your question, mate. Uh, just having a look who we've got in. We've got Not My Monkeys, Not My Circus, Carolyn Looms, Marcus Thompson, obviously Sap the Bee, Devon's Forearms, Stizzy, all in here. Trig Trigger, a lot of the usual suspects. Good to see you all in here, guys. And we've got about uh, 160 people. These guys must have shown up for you, Evan. Did you at least put the link for my channel in this time yet? I will do. You know what? I didn't do that last time, did I? What an asshole. What a lazy bastard. What that what that came down to really was more, you know, when you do the description. No, just, I don't know how to do any of that. Well, why are you giving me shit then? Because you didn't do it. Because I didn't do it, but at least I did a description, you idle bastard. Yeah, but you, I don't you know how to. a bloody description. But I don't know how to, so at least no, I can blame no. my ignorance. Listen, can you write? I'm ignorant. I don't know how to do this stuff. I'm, I'm just not a techie guy. You know how to do this stuff and just didn't do it. Okay, two good points in there. But can you write? Not if somebody wants to read it. Holy shit, talk about your all-time backfires. Mind you, it is type, you know, so you can just type it away on your keyboard. Right, but then you have to know how to do it, and it takes forever. <laughs> so that's why I haven't bothered learning. Yeah, yeah I like one that. One finger seek and destroy, man. That's, that's how I type. Fair enough. So and I can't use like a smartphone to type. Well, one, because my <coughs> screen smashed to shit and I can't see it. Plus yeah. my thumbs like to hit every button at the same time. I've got wearward thumbs. You ask my wife. Talk to so, test. 
Talk to text. That's that's it. <laughs> Carolyn Loom's just come in with a super chat. But Evan, would you have a nail bending match versus Bowen? Yeah, he's big into nail bending now, isn't he? Well, he could bend the nails. And I'll bend him. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is selling to another one. Marcus Thompson I'm with okay a super with chat. He's put for number one man in arm wrestling. Sorry, Evan. Not you. <laughs> hey, there you go. You see. Well, Marcus read the rest of it out there. He's what he's near he's near to the homeland, mate. We we're talking about that before we came on. So yeah, well, almost... why don't you just go ahead and tell him what you were talking about, all the Irish, where he's from? I said that the Irish are you starting with a lie more than any other nation in the world. The Scots are close second. I mean, if you look around the British Isles, we've got like an eclectic mis- mix of people that love scrapping. So you could be a cross between a Viking, an Irishman, a Scot. Can you sing? Marcus, he said none of this stuff. You could tell by him not being able to hold a straight face while saying this. No, I can't hold a straight face while talking to you most days, Evan. Let me finish your super chat here. Marcus, we love you, mate. And he's put, also, get online later, preferably drunk. You were it's Thursday, tonight, Thursday. Tonight, that's going to happen. Thursday night. He gets, Thursday, his, Thursday. gets his clan on and gets lit. I do the Q&A. I just sit around, get drunk, and talk to anybody that wants to pay attention. For about five hours. Well, I plan a two-hour segment. And You ever get drunk and forget to look at the time because you can't Mm. read and it doesn't matter? I've done that. Every Thursday. There you go, son. Also Tuesdays. (laughs) Ready, Pirate Blue Bowen with a super chat. Neil, ask Usain Beeman if he's gotten his weekly dose of Devon's belly button oil. On his oh, oh, on his five head, <laughs> oh yeah. So that guy, oh, that's wrong on a lot of levels. As uh, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. He's on my channel all the time just to super chat shit in like that. I mean, and, it's uh, like generally, it. I don't bother reading anything that guy says if it's in green. <laughs> yeah, he has to be like red for you to pay any attention. No, no, no. Yellow, I'll read out for him. But green, I just snip, I just giggle. I'm like, okay, that's funny. But you didn't pay enough for me to mention your name. So Fuck when you're guy. on your five-hour live tonight and you notice that Marcus Thompson, who lives over here, is on there, you will clearly see that the man doesn't have an off switch. Marcus is the most active dude in the world. I wonder whether he sleeps just between lives. I, I actually, after following Marcus, he's on every, every live. Every goddamn show. And he shows up with a bang, like he lets his presence be known. Like he's oh, yeah. like he just walks into the locker room and flops that motherfucker out for everybody to see. Big time. Yeah, man doesn't play games. Right. Marcus so Thompson how does he have time for all of this? Like he clearly doesn't work. All he does is he's as drunk as me, like all the time and watching lives. <laughs> it's incredible. Like he's an active to dude, the man. point where I've actually been Googling and trying to find out is there any Irish drunks that have won the lottery lately? Uh, I'm pretty sure there is one. I think I even saw one in the. Oh, look what you've done here. Look at this, Evan. Thomas Miles is in the chat and he's put, Neil, is it true? Alan the Hitman beat you, but you cheated and won. This is the kind of stuff I have to deal with. Whose fault is that, Evan? Levan Saganash for his kidney. He's put, at Matt Rhodes Sport, I saw your Instagram story. Can't wait. Okay, Matt Rhodes must be in the chat as well then. We got a lot Who's of Juju Mugu's on tonight. Oh, let's have a look what else we got in here. Do you know before who Matt Rhodes I let is? you get off the hook, let's talk about this bloody rule thing. Because you speak to Devon pretty regularly. Is he genuinely upset or is he just taking a piss? Um, I think Devon's just really, really focused. Uh, when you've got a match like this, like, yeah, he's been, he's had that number one spot before and he's held it for quite some time. Like, he knows the game really well. But at this point, this is the biggest match of his career. Oh, without doubt, yeah. Well, it's always your next match is the most important, but this is one that will kind of set him aside from a lot of people, right? Uh, well, it answers so many questions, doesn't it? And so many, what's the right word? Probably accusations, actually, is the right word. Because if, you know, the, the, let's take the one that Devon doesn't pull Europeans. You know, this is 
you know, pretty universally recognized. The this is the biggest, strongest the, European that's ever arm wrestled. Yeah, potentially biggest, strongest arm wrestler that's ever arm wrestled. He's in that conversation for sure. Yeah. So that would lay all that to rest. Um, so I as can far understand as why. Acclamations go, though. Spoke. This is like the biggest part of Devin's career. Like he may have held that number one spot for longer in mm-hmm. one stretch than anybody else ever has. Yeah. But to take that number one spot back after coming back after the surgeries and the growth that he's done to get to this point, and now you're taking on the biggest, baddest dude that has ever done it. If he gets this done somehow, this is, uh, it, it really solidifies him. I think, uh, to me, that would have him overtaken John in that spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, the, the taking over John thing is I get very it. hard for It's me impossible to, to do for most people. I, yeah. I still don't get why everybody just gives it to John. But, I really don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't just give it to John. I, I've seen John earn it for a massive amount of time, and he's a small man. Right, but you didn't dude. try to cheat Allen out of a match. So trying to believe anything you say, it's tough. Yeah, I can imagine it is for a high hooker. I mean, having watched that, it's like seeing you know. If somebody just came round to your house on Christmas Day after your mum had cut Christmas lunch and told you it was shit, I mean, that's the kind of thing it must be like for the high hookers guys after I smacked the piss out of him like that. I can imagine it was really hard. I mean, I know how badly it hurt John Milne, who's one of my Neil, closest I got to cut you off right there, buddy. One, anybody ever talks about my mama, we're going to have a problem. And two, he's probably right. My mom can't cook with a shit. Is she not a good cook? No. Oh, Christ. I was going to come round if she offered. She rang me up and said, "That's why I learned." Once coming round, having some Christmas dinner, I'll be like, "Yes, Mrs. Burgoyne, I will come round right now." But now, it's the oh, Evan, it's about to warm up some. Sean Brof here with a super chat, and it is a red one. Sean Brof is my man. He's put Iron House. Can't wait for tomorrow. Oh, Sean, I can't. I cannot wait okay. for tomorrow. Tomorrow, Game the Iron House that comes out. Yes. Is that the four-way? Well, you know what? It's not the four-way, no. But it's part of it. Okay, so it's that whole four-way thing is getting released in sections. Yes. Yeah. So tomorrow... And it starts tomorrow. So tomorrow is Jordan Davis... And Bogdan Stoika. And Bogdan. Yeah. So oh. Sean Brophy, son, you will love it. We've got one little bit. I've just got. To, I always like to uh, like to respond to uh, people in the chat who are putting in some solid stuff. Uh, and we got off Alvarez, a mate. Often on this channel, I'm the guy that speaks the most bollocks. Not tonight, son. That's you. Now, anyway, Guitar King, hi from South Africa. Got any other guests today? Try and get Levan soon. Yeah, we got other guests. Relentless Frodo Hogland is in the mother fluffing house. Hello. How are you doing, dude? I'm oh, great, great. Now that you know Evan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever met? No, no. Oh, we're going to change that. Shit. Don't worry about that. Well, did you see last week's show? Yes. Oh, this is good. Now, Frodo, if you watched all of last uh, the last show when I was on here, Mm-hmm. I just want you to understand that, like, this is a live show, and I mean every fucking word I said. There you go. That's what nice. did you think? What did you think when you when you were listening to Evan last week? Bearing, I mean, you'll have seen some of his matches, won't you? Just organizing. It's Norwegian. That that's probably worth more than your house. And I might have dropped out. So, can you hear me? Yes, mate. You can hear you. Uh, right, right. quietly, but we can hear. Yeah. yeah. Uh... <clears throat> I've just seen uh, the matches with uh, Bowen, <laughs> unfortunately. Can't imagine why you'd have seen that. <laughs> no, it pops up everywhere, so. Yeah, that's true. Kind of hard to miss. Evan, Evan's been trying to live it down. But based on that match, you know, what did you think? Did you think. That wasn't that... even me. You didn't uh, have me. There was no beard. There was no beer. Like, that wasn't me. <laughs> no, I. Um... Yeah, what what do I think of it? Um, it looks looked like you gassed out quite uh, early, and um, yeah, 
you hit uh, hit uh, where I'm the strongest. So it was also our second super match of the day each. Oh yeah, okay. And I had a 260 pound juggernaut, Craig Subler, and he had 160 pound Chris Gavi. Right. So. That's Evan's take on things. Plus, I was sober and didn't I mean, even that's have a beer. Probably a valid point right there. Yeah. I think, you know, add those three things together, it, uh, it wasn't me. But stylistically, Frodo, but- you think that that's a good match for you? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and you wouldn't be concerned about the weight because Evan's like, he's, he's, he's 110 kilos, there, thereabouts. Like bang on this yeah. morning. Yeah, don't bother me at all. Um, I think the match would be good. Uh, I'm not sure how strong you are, but... Uh, Stronger than you. <laughs> we'll see. Sit there and grin at me like that, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the plan, Frodo, because... Firstly, has your frigging foot healed up yet? Yes. A hundred percent. For those who don't know, guys, Frodo's leg before the Iron House event doubled in size. You've never seen anything like it. It was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and you were in hospital, and then you got out of hospital, weren't you, and then went back in. Yeah. So the second time, how long did they keep you in, mate? Uh, two days. And have you had that before? Yeah, once. Once before. How long ago? Uh, that's 2012-ish. 13, 12, something okay, like that. so, yeah, so you've had a, one experience of it before, but it's not something that happens regularly and it's not for, it's not recent. No, no, no. <laughs> what was the problem with it? Uh, just a bruising that got uh, infected and, um, yeah, infected bad. <laughs> bad. I mean, it. you know, if I had any part of my body that swelled up that big, I'd be getting... I've had a few infections that have caused some massive swelling, and uh, if it wasn't so painful, I was thinking about keeping it around. I was kind of proud. (laughs) Yeah, that's what you want sometimes. But to be fair, I thought that Frodo may die. So when he was saying, oh, I want to come over and pull Iron House, we were like, nah, probably not a good idea, mate. That looks really, really bad. While on Mm. antibiotics and shit for it? Hmm. Antibiotics just completely zap your strength. Yeah. Uh, I have to I go back and change all my predictions. Can I just check something? Was Alan Ford on antibiotics when we pulled? Was Alan Ford what? On antibiotics when we pulled. No. I have no idea. I wasn't even arm wrestling back then. Check that out. I should. Next time you see him. We're going to need some type of excuse for him. Well, you do, you do really badly. So Besides Angel Eyes has come in with a super chat, and he's put, "Come on, Neil, you're coming back to compete. Uh, we'll be bigger than a donkey's." Do you know what, mate? There may be a time, there may be a time, but it won't be for a while because I've got bigger fish to fry, and it's called Arm Wars. You can check it out tomorrow night. And Jason Jaywank is working on it right now, ladies and gentlemen, finalizing that show. Now let's have a look what. Set the bee is coming with us, but Evan, you're a grown man. Stop, King Devons. He's going to get smash six all like the fraud he is. His legacy will be zero right handed wins against Europeans and ducking tournaments. So, pretty balanced perspective there from Sap the bee. I'm kind of with Sap on that. Like, I know Devon's huge and stupid fucking strong right now. I still don't think it's enough, but not the blowing in bit the start of that it's Devin yeah nobody wants that but uh, yeah I don't think I've ever said that I don't think that I think Devin's going to win mm-hmm. he might get the 5-1 just enough to ruin Levon's 6 nothing thing that he wants to retire with yeah yeah I, I think that's a tall order anyway forget, forget this oh my god Devin Somebody else is coming on. You're going to love this. What? It's coming on now, man. It's coming oh, on. we've that, got a new guest coming in. Yeah, a new guest coming on. We're gonna, I'm going to keep surprising you. I would have done it with Ryan Bowen, but he bottled it. Ah. And it looks like... 
nobody wants to hear from Ryan Bowen anyways. His voice is just annoying. At least Frodo just sits there, shuts up, and smiles. <laughs> he does that at the table as well when he's holding you in a hook. I know. That's the best part. Which is, you know, got, that can be quite off-putting. Except this that is smile weird. is going to be uh, not one of joy whenever he feels that he just went into a hook with me and he's got to deal with my shoulder now. He likes getting his shoulder in, but it's just a bigger, stronger shoulder coming at him. He's not going to like it. Well, this is interesting because we got a bit. We've got to decide who the hell we put in there with you, and it could be this man. Ah, I see why you were so yeah. excited. Ah, now it's starting to come together, and you think another I'm guy that doesn't speak up. English? Only warming up. Hey, so I got to try connect. to like. I need a translator for all three of you at this point. No, you can, uh, listen. You understand me perfectly well. I mean, Frodo, obviously, Ish. everybody, you know, they're going to struggle a little bit with that. I think my dad might be in the chat under the name Arf Alvarez. But uh, I'm not sure. Unless that's just one of your guys. That's probably Alan Ford. Right there. That could be, it could be Alan. Let's see what we got on here. Come on, David, connect that audio, son. I know you're in bloody Edinburgh, but get it sorted. Where's yeah. Edinburgh? That's in Scotland. It's a complicated situation. He's a Welshman, though. So he's Welsh, but he's in Scotland. Correct. Yeah, okay. he was kidnapped by a Scottish woman. Was it Grant Diet? No, he's a, he's a very sexy man. Here he is now. He's come, uh, come on, Dave. What are you playing at, son? What's with the concealed lighting? Who the hell is Cryan Howan? Who the hell is that? Does anybody know who that is? Who? Crying Howan. Uh, it's probably uh, just RF Alvarez being a funny guy and putting something in there where he's just mixing up Ryan Bowen to make everybody laugh. Comical do. Now then, come on, Dave. Connect, son. You're playing up. Well, let's get to Dave whenever he finally figures out his shit. Yeah, he's he's... So apparently he's about world. as smart as he is good at arm wrestling. So here we go. A serious question from Carolyn Looms. He's a serious arm wrestling fan. Is Carolyn from Canada? No. USA? Yes. Okay, Carolyn. Thank you for your super chat, mate. Big, big supporter of all the channels, Carolyn Looms. Very, very uh active also, like Marcus. She's everywhere and anywhere. So put Frauda. So this is for you, Norwegian. Do you think Derek Smith? can beat Dave Chafee. No. That's harsh, no not today, at least. Quite what do you think on that one, Evan? Probably not. Me I mean... Two big Dave fans. Derek Smith arm wrestles in a very traditional style. He's, he's very, very big and very, very strong. But anybody that tries to match horsepower with Dave in that center table area usually gets the wrong end of things how many guys have you seen straight beat dave off that center one levon that's it mm -hmm. anybody else that's beaten him has done it other ways yeah yeah you gotta listen i think i think that uh, derek is on the rise big time and i think he's got room to grow in terms of where, you know, there, there are no losses for him right now, particularly against guys like Dave Chafee. I mean, you you know, with all due respect to Derek, wind the clock back three years, you wouldn't have even thought about that match. Now people are thinking about it and they're asking that question. So the dude's on the rise, he's a young man. He's got all the tools. I would love to see him embrace the technical side of the sport to the max. So he combines all that God-given gifts he's got with some genuine technical prowess that we don't see from most of the super heavyweights, they tend to. He is getting better with that, and that's exciting to me. I think that if you get a guy like that who really understands the sport and embraces the sport like Derek does, he can do a lot of things with that. You know, if he wrestles like the weakest man in the room, rather than trying to be the strongest man in the room. Gutted that David Bradford's not good in yet, but uh, I would like to see connects in a minute. If Derek wins, mm -hmm. I'd like to see him look. Uh across the ocean for his next match to one of those very top guys. Uh, preferably well, isn't it funny? I had him matched last year at Reality Check with Alex Kadecha. Yes. Uh, that it was, was a shame that that one fell apart, but I don't think Derek was as ready as he is now for that. Mm. 
But uh, and if he loses, as long as he's in a match at all with Dave, then revisiting that Alex match makes a lot of sense. But if he wins, then Alex doesn't make sense for his next one. I would rather see him go to the tally. Yeah. But if he loses, but the match is somewhat even close at all, then the Alex match again. Vitaly Lalatin might be the man, mate. He might be. He, he might, might be, be the man. The man. The man. He is dangerous. I mean, he wasn't far away from Levan last time they pulled. A lot closer than people think. And we saw him make significant strides forward. The problem Closer is anybody else. the situation being as it is in Russia, it may be some time before we find anything like that out. And let's be honest, there's bigger fish to fry. So, you know... Um, it may be it's a shame time. whenever politics fuck up our sports. Fucking up everything at the moment, mate. It really is. It's a terrible situation. Hopefully, one that uh, passes without too many more people losing their lives. Do you eat this stuff, Froda? Uh, no. You bloody well should we have do it. Some. This is the one. It's the best beef jerky on planet Earth. Right there. Did, I, did Bible, I get something? Gentlemen. That is the one. So we got Matt Rhodes in the chat. I knew he was on here early on. He's put beer on ice to watch Arm Wars tomorrow, the Iron House. Matt, you love it, mate. We're looking forward to that tomorrow. As I was saying to Evan earlier on, just before Froda joined, great matchup tomorrow. Guy involved in that match that Froda Hoagland knows very, very well, Bogdan Stoika, who is an exceptional arm wrestler. And talking about exceptional arm wrestlers, he pulls another one in Jordan, the reach of Davis. So that's uh, that's the match that will start the Iron House tomorrow. Now, did Jordan put on weight for this? Jordan came in weighing about the same. So he was sort of 94, 95 kilos. Uh, he was big for that. And he's a tall guy. Very that tall guy. That is huge for Jordan. Yeah. Well, he's been walking around at that weight for quite a while, mate, to be honest. He's a big boy. Because like when he was pulling uh, Zlati and stuff like that, he was pulling 165, wasn't he? Yeah, 75 kilos. But he was always suppressing his weight. He's tall. Um, so, I know yeah, he's tall. He, he's got a really big hand, a very long forearm. Absolutely. Yeah, he's and built for the game, mate. From Venom. hand is a very, very weird, awkward, long dimension, like Matt yeah. Mask. Mm -hmm. The yeah, reason it's so hard to hook Matt Mask isn't necessarily because of how strong he is, but the distance from his hand to his wrist joint is just so far that whenever he decides to pull it away, there's nothing to reach. It's just too big. Cobra Rhodes-esque. Yeah, Cobra back in the day had that also. Juji Mugu with a super chat. He's, but what do you think about Jerry Cataret calling out the top five with a two-to-one bet, including Devon? Is Jerry still top 10 or now a basement YouTuber? No, Jerry's a dangerous, dangerous individual. Does he arm wrestle? He arm wrestles. I mean, well, it's kind of... I'm not sure it's, you know, frauder does endorse that move. He likes the dead wrist press. A lot of people don't know whether it's even arm wrestling, whether it's a move. But joking aside, it's extremely effective. I don't he's think one of the guys that will to move. He's X Factor, Evan. He's one of those guys that can cause major problems for the big hitters. And he, I'd love to see him get back in that mix. I think Jerry's one of those guys that when he really commits, really throws his weight into it, he is a threat for most men. Because who the hell emulates him? How many guys have they run into in their career that do what he does? Very, very few. And if you look at, uh, at Jerry's track record, stylistically, he had issues with Dave Chafee. That's a fair comment. But outside of that, in a one-on-one -on -one match situation, he was extremely difficult to beat. Extremely but, difficult. Yeah, it, that's the thing with Dave. It doesn't matter how strong you are. If you're coming at straight at him in a fundamental style, he's just so goddamn strong. Mm -hmm. Jerry will do better against people that have a lot more of the uh, tricky side of things down. On the universal scale of arm you wrestling. You want to run around and get all tricky. Jerry yeah. would rather have his hand in a hook when he does his press. Yeah, just he can But if you want to get fancy and you're going to like run away from his hand, he'll just give it away and fill that gap with his shoulder and start the match that much closer to the pin. And he's incredibly good in terms of his endurance. Very like Froda, to be honest, in that respect, you know. I mean, he looks, he doesn't look quite as sexy as you, Froda. I mean, he ain't got those dazzling blue eyes and that smile. Trade but that wiggly that, tongue and 150 pounds for uh, a big <laughs> old grin and same guy, really. <clears throat> so interestingly, Adam Vandal's in the chat. He's put Froda, 
you know some Western Survivor beef jerky will heal that unit for life. Just saying. Mate, you get on this, Western Survivor, you will have endless hours of fun. There's no doubt. This is the one, mate. Yeah, send, send me some. You do a lot of manly stuff. Thing. Listen, next time we do Iron House, we're going to have this stuff in the Iron House, and you guys can all get on it. And I'll Which tell you what. Which flavor is that? It's phenomenal. That one. This is the uh, sweet chili flake. Have you had that? That's the one I ate live last time with you. Good gear. That shit's amazing. Not as good I as I got the Chipotle pepper, going tonight. Yeah, it's good gear, mate. It is absolutely spot on. So Carolyn Looms has just come back and said she was. Do you know she's a Brit? I didn't know that. She's put she was a Leicester lass until 2006. Now she lives in Maine, USA. We're getting everywhere. I tell you. Branching out. DCS Beamer in the chat. Derek Smith versus Jerry Cataret before Derek looks across the pond. I like that match. Acid test. I do like that match. That will be very interesting. Uh, he's not Derek bomb. and Jerry? Yeah, I like that match. Whoever That's Derek's manager is, is an idiot if they take that one. Sorry, say again. Whoever... That's a terrible idea. Why? Derek should not be looking at that match. Why? Because Jerry presents a whole new type of problems for a guy that pulls like Derek. Yeah. That, well, uh, do you think Derek fears a loss? I don't. I don't think it's a fears a loss thing. I just think he has better options. If he loses to Dave, but he's even close. Hmm. Um, it's the old advancement over progression thing, isn't it? Well, uh, if, you look, if you just look into advance your ranking then that's one thing. But if you're looking to genuinely progress, I think it's a good match for him. Because stylistically... Maybe. maybe it's... But it's not necessarily just advancing ranking. Um, I put a lot more into uh, keeping your stock as a puller high. When you have a high profile, um, matches, you either want to get paid for them mm -hmm. or you want a match that's going to look really good. And I think Derek versus Jerry, it's going to go one way or the other real quickly. And uh, you're not going to have a great match, I don't think. I'd be interested to see whether the size of Derek, if he gets a dominant position, can do a lot with Jerry, whether he can hold him up, because he really is a big lad. So if he could get onto the A side and bust Jerry back, whether he could do much with him. I mean, another match that would be interesting in that respect would be Derek and Todzilla. I'd just rather see that of, one. Derek well, it's Devin. interesting just because of the same thing. How much centre has he got? Because we've seen with other, you know, I, I was talking about Matt the other week, who's one of my favourite armourists in the world, but I think that's he's another guy, a little bit like Derek, who I think's got amazing room to growth. Real, pr an opportunity to really progress further. Corey and West would be good for Derek. Interesting. The Corey hey. West match always makes sense if Derek loses too. Yeah, you certainly do. I, I've wanted to see that for a while. I think Far more than Jans, Corey and Jerry Derek does. Thing, that has to happen. You know, yeah, really just does. as a fan of Derek, I would avoid the uh, Jerry match if you can. Yeah. And Jerry doesn't GB seem 19, to really be taking who is this guy to you, Evan? Seriously. Who's GB19, mate? Not a clue. Okay, he's put Beer Man. Are you Canadian? There you go. Sure am. Thanks for your super chat, GB19. He is Canadian all the way. Juju Mugu, can you poke Frodo with a pin to see if he's alive? Are you still alive, Frodo? Yes. What the hell is that you're eating there? Is that is, it, is that is that a pen or is that, that a celery? A what the... Okay, fair enough. I thought you were doing a doing a Devon on us there, mate, and getting some food going. I'm gutted that Bradford has not got in here yet. What the fuck is going on, David? Let's go. Big Grove Goats with a super chat. Hey guys, I broke my humerus uh, on the four on four eleven. How long do you think it will take to heal? Ooh. To be honest, mate, that's a very complex subject because that can be answer A and answer Z. I mean, the the extent of the break, whether you had it pin fired, plated, uh, whether it was a spiral fracture or other. I've seen guys come back from broken arms and be pulling strong again in a couple of years. I think you can come back sooner than that, but I would come back in a measured manner. You don't want to come charging back and try and make too much gains too early and re-damage the arm. Uh, you can come back and it can come back stronger. I know a number of guys that have had breaks and come back significantly stronger. 
So don't How many guys have you it. seen break their forearm? Arm uh, I've only seen two that have broken the forearm. Only two. Um, I've never seen any weird. that broke there. They're always an inch above the elbow. On a spiral. Yeah. Yeah. If you if 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 you get a nasty weird break, often they'll plate it, pin it, and plate it, and that's an entirely different set of criteria that can be quite complicated i know one guy uh from a place called wigan near where we we live here and he had a break to the forearm and it was complicated in every way it created major problems he had a ended up with a bend in the middle of his forearm like literally like a total bend out of shape he came back but it was i would say three to four years after uh, and he was never strong some guys come back stronger I hope you're one of those guys, mate. I really do. B. Pose, thanks for your super chat, brother. Another big uh, supporter of the channel. Really appreciate it. And Big Grove Goats just come back. He's put, I sent you pics on Facebook Messenger, Neil. Uh, speak break, no surgery. Okay. I'll have a look at those, mate. When I finish the show, I'll have a look at those and give you any assessment I can. But, yeah, you, you need to be careful with that. If it's a weird, uh, weird damage in there and the separation in the bone, that's the critical critical thing if you've got any separation in the bone you need to make sure that that's really calcified solidly uh you do not want to create a weakness in there the whole thing is that you need it to heal thicker uh than it was before and that is not going to happen quickly so be very very careful with that don't rush back too many people trying to get back from injuries too quick uh, and that will do you no good whatsoever carolyn looms just put froda would you like to arm wrestle anyone from the uf usa and if so who Anyone, everyone. <laughs> Is there anybody on your hit list other than Evan, obviously? Um, I don't know. Um, I wanted to pull uh, uh, pull in. Um, okay. He's but, bigger now, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's maybe too strong. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I I want to pull everybody. I don't mind. Would you prefer to pull guys that like Evan who are going to go straight into slot into that hook, or would you like to pull someone who's going to test you technically? Someone like, let's say, Jason Merlo, who's much more of a top role based arm wrestler. Uh, <clears throat> I enjoy pulling in a hook more, but uh, but I don't mind uh, getting tested everywhere. Um, yeah, I. I I want to pull everybody. It doesn't matter if they're topping, hop, um, hooking, or pressing, whatever. It's fine. It's you yeah. know the 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 battleground scenario where you've got four guys in a class. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer that, or do you prefer to pull guys? Do you think, in other words, does that favor you when? Guys are going to come out of that situation ruined. You're known for being a guy that can go forever. Tell you the truth, when we were on here at the beginning of tonight, uh, I was speaking to Evan, who is actually a big fan of yours, to be fair to the lad. And he said, yeah, I can't look at Froda uh, and take the piss out of him because the guy's got an incredible gas tank. He goes forever. Uh, and I actually, I'm a fan of his arm wrestling. He, he arm wrestles really well. Do you feel like when you're in a four-way, it is beneficial for you, mate. Do you prefer to pull with four guys in the class because you know that you're going to beat the piss out of each other and you may rise to the top? Or do you like the the, the one on one stuff? Uh, I used to like the battlegrounds more um, because I had to had a chance to pull pull more. Uh, now I'm getting older; my arms can't take the uh, the wars as good, and. Uh, yeah, I don't recover fast enough anymore. So, Have you got a lot of injuries, mate? Well, it's, the elbows are sore. There's not How long no, between no injuries. matches in that format? Uh, the Iron House, we would potentially have a couple of hours. That's I would, terrible. Yeah, I would oh, prefer it to be just straight after. Either right after or like, yeah. give me a day or two, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's funny though. Wait a few hours, let it cool down, and then you got to warm it up and go right back at that. That is mm. hell on your, especially if you've got any type of internal rotation that you're banking on. 
the inflammation after a few yeah. hours is time to set in. That is a nightmare. We've experimented yeah. with that, Evan. Um, we gave lads the choice. We said, look, you can go straight back on. Obviously, if you've got a four-way, the matches are probably taking, on average, somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes in terms of the duration because you're pulling a full six rounds and often the battles. So if you've got one set of guys that have gone on, pull 30 minutes, then they start to rest. The next crew come on and they pull 30 minutes. You can't then put them straight back on against the guy who's had 30 minutes rest. They just get slaughtered. You ever so think about uh, buying a second bit? camera? Well, two hours seem like the optimum. That seemed like the pre a pretty optimum way of doing it. And most of the guys that we've experienced seem to like that approach. They seem to think that two hours was about spot on. And well, the only way that you could do it matches. where you have it right away is if you've got these two guys pulling over here mm -hmm. and these two guys pulling over here, you know, you've got your camera still doing it all. And then as soon as the matches are over, then you just switch around. Yeah, but it's all right? So you can still go continuously. Different thing, mate. We're, we're looking at, think, get your head out of arm wrestling tournament and get your head into single focus show. Right, but I mean, you could always do your commentary afterwards. It's nothing to do with commentary. It's that you'll you'll see when you see Iron House. You it'll you'll it'll make sense. It's a you just very, need two different rooms different filming your, your footage. Very different setup to what you'd see at a tournament. Incredibly different, and the the singular focus of the whole show is like nothing else you'll experience in the sport of arm wrestling. The first thing we usually get from guys the first time they come to arm wars is that. They get, oh, shit, this is really different. Even guys who are veteran pullers. I remember Bob Brown coming over, pulling in arm wars, and the first thing he said after, he said, I had no idea how different that is to anything else in the sport. It's totally unique. John was saying that to us when he came over. He said, it's just completely, I've never experienced anything like that. It's just a completely different animal. And we get that very, very regularly. That's why Frode is a specialist in it, because he's done it for so bloody long, it's second nature to him. I think you may be the current record holder in terms of people that's pulled the most Arm Wars events. Yeah, You're definitely yeah. up there. I Yeah. I, I used to pull like two or three, at least, matches on each arm. So, yeah. And I, I was at every event, so <laughs> probably has the most matches. Yeah. Yeah. You and, and 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 I would say if you looked across the entire roster in Arm Wars, you're definitely the guy that's had more battles than anyone else in Arm Wars. My God, you've been involved with some scraps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I hold the record the other way for the longest time trying to get on Arm Wars and can't do it. <laughs> well, you keep getting COVID. I had COVID once. And then just kept testing positive. So I don't know who to trust here because the last time Frodo was on the frigging thing, he, he, he nearly died and we had to take him off. You had COVID, couldn't fly out of Canada. So, you know, you'll have to smuggle yourself out in Uncle John's suitcase. You're going to need a bigger suitcase. Yeah, that's true, mate. He really would. He's so living going to get off, have to get off that stupid diet of his if he wants to carry that suitcase with me yeah, in he's it. He's dropping a lot of weight, isn't he? He really is. We got a Canadian dollar super chat from Living Hints. He's put, gents, the sport is above the drama to be hyped. When a great rivalry is expected, the champions at the table are expected to act like champions on the way there. Keep up the feeds. Great stuff. Champion I disagree up. with all of that. <laughs> Break that down for me. I do what I want. This whole acting like a champion thing, like as a teenager playing hockey in Canada, if you wanted to play on the uh, the rep team, the all-star team, mm -hmm. you had to like wear a dress shirt and a tie in and out of the arena and all that shit. To, like, that's not me. Not going to do it. I will well, also be... for, for guys like, I mean, obviously that he's going to be referring to the whole situation with Devin and, and Levan. Uh, part of Devin's game plan is going to be to try and unsettle. Levan, that's a big. I am absolutely sure that Levan Saganashvili knows that isn't unsettled by that, and he's trying to prep himself to keep as quiet as he can to avoid the bullets, not get into the hail. Doesn't want to get involved with that whatsoever, and he feels like the more distance he can put between himself and that whole scenario, the better he'll fare, and it'll come down to just arm wrestling. That's his tactic. I'm actually dealing with that right now for my match coming up in two weeks. Everybody knows 
that I do the same shit. Like you can actually watch Devin's career and see how much harder he plays that same game since I started. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just always what I've done, but now I got a match coming up and instead of me being really hard on my opponent, Mm -hmm. I've got so many people messaging me doing it back to me. And they, what they don't understand is it doesn't work that way. You actually have to give a shit for it to bother you. Yeah. And some guys don't. They really don't. Other guys are very sensitive to it. You know? Everybody's sensitive to it if you do it right. Everybody's sensitive to it to a degree, I think. You know, if you allow it to get in your head, and if you respond to it and you get wound up by it, I mean, I must admit, I like a bit of back and forth, though. Me too. I enjoy it, you know? Me too. So this whole Frodo thing, like, is this actually happening? Am I going to get, actually get to whoop his ass? Yes. Well, the last bit, I don't know. But you're definitely going to let get to arm wrestling, yeah. Look, all I need is a chance, and I'll make the rest happen. Okay. Yes. I mean, now, Frodo's... Is this an Iron House format thing? Hmm. That sucks. So you're telling me I got to pull Frodo? Yep. And then two hours later, pull somebody else? Yeah. What a load of horse shit. When I said I'd pull the two of them at the no, same time, wonderful. that doesn't mean pull other people after that. What's the longest you've gone, you know, through an event and pull? I mean, at the bottom eight, you pulled, what, three matches? Yeah. Two matches. You pulled Subliere, and then you pulled uh, Ryan. Did you pull another one after that? I actually don't remember. After losing to Ryan, I started drinking. Okay. And that eating mushrooms. Like Okay, so it's going to be a different experience for you, mate. But there is left arm and there is right arm. And obviously, you're going to be much more confident on your left. Your left is, I know you always say your right is just as strong or stronger. It is. Than your left. But uh, I don't any lifts I do in the gym, are. my right hand is way stronger than my left. But your left seems to perform better. I think that's just overall level of arm wrestling, left-handed being less. So the only question would be how we, we sort of set that up left arm, right arm, because the idea is that we give you very difficult matches first round. And on the opposite side of the draw are two guys who are going to give each other a plague as well, but are on a very similar level to you. Right. But not necessarily a great matchup either way for us. Ideally we get for that, but it's very If you can get four guys all together, that it's going to be a screamer, no matter which way you do it. It's just a really tough way to do things. It's difficult, but we've managed to do it quite a few times. In this particular instance, it's more difficult because stylistically, there's a big disparity. I mean, you're looking at, depending who we bring in, you know, you've got options there. Ryan Bowen would be one. But it's down to, I mean, do you want to pull Ryan Bowen again? Is that a match you want? Not an hour and a half after pulling Froda. What about if Froda pulled Ryan Bowen? And I don't you have pull to pull Nicholas anybody, Namastad. and then I get to pull them? Yeah. Yeah, because that could happen, realistically. Let's say you had yourself, Nanastad, Froda, and Bowen. Right. That, that's a four-way that could work in any way. So, for, in other words, you and Nanastad works probably, probably better left, but it works either way. Froda and Bowen works. Uh, Froda and Ryan may die in that match. I mean, that would be a brutal frigging tear up. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But then again, if Nanastad falls your wrist back, it would be a long match. I don't need to have my hand to pull. No, but if you, even if you don't have your hand, that guy takes some finishing. Yeah, no, no it's a bad day. I, I would much rather have my hand uh, in my where I want it than where he wants it, but yeah, so There's it's, just it's not it's, a whole it's lot same of shit, different. There style. is not one way that this match, any of these matchups, will go that are actually going to be fun. No, terrible. Yeah, I'm going to hate terrible. every second of it. The only part I enjoy is trying to fight somebody. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Everything else is that. absolutely terrible. I hate yeah. it. It hurts. I, I, I think there's a number of ways that we can do it, and if we were really evil, we could make it an eight. Like the good old days. Frodo's I'm not really interested in doing eight, man. That, that, 
Well, like doing three men in the same day is one thing, but doing eight dudes? Jesus, yeah. Neil. Well, so my missus tells me. And you want to film it? And that's another one, she said. <laughs> but, you know, these <laughs> listen, issues can happen. Uh, we, we can we can put these out there with a good best of intentions. An eight man tournament, an eight man battleground is something we've not done yet in Iron House. But I love the concept. If you can balance that right, if you've got the right guys and they can finish the course, it can be incredible. I mean, everybody's on their ass in the last round, beyond belief. But God, it's entertaining. It's oh, really man. entertaining. And it can go anywhere. I think anyway. you're ruining some fantastic matches doing it that way. It's a great you level. You halfway ever. through it and then give everybody a two-month break and come back to finish the second half and then it can all get released at once? No, that sucks. For who? Everyone. No, it Listen, sucks people... for the guy that's got to pull six different matches in a day. Mm -hmm. Been there. Ah. It's My awesome. problem with that is... Uh, I don't like the uh, possibility of getting out of there and still being able to arm wrestle for the next year. Oh, you'd be able to arm wrestle probably in about a month and a half time. That's usually what it takes to recover from something like that. But it is an experience. There's no doubt. It's unique. So, you you know, Froda's been there. The eight mans are good fun, aren't they, Froda? Yeah, they are. Uh, it's special. <laughs> eight man, six rounds of a match. Yes. Jesus. Yep. Brutal, mate. But fun. And it's a great leveler. You'd be amazed how much, you know, because if you've gone through a couple of matches where you've just gone to the red line, that next match, technique doesn't really matter. Style doesn't really matter. It's down to a different set of criteria. Just completely different. Winning ugly is important at that time. So someone like Froda, Toddzilla, guys like that, if you can pull without your hand, yeah, it's a big benefit. Really helps, you know, so... 20, uh, we got S20 Ack, or S20 ACC with a super chat. He's put no clubs in Cumbria. Do I need one to enter UK events? Uh, you would have to speak to the PAA about that and what their requirements are for entering tournaments. But there are clubs, uh, certainly instructors in Cumbria. Ted the Elf Wilson is based in Estale, Cumbria, mate. So there's some good instructors up that way. So you can definitely get yourself involved with something over there. Carolyn Lewis with another super chat. But Neil loved the series. Uh, you and Evan is gold, mate. We're, we're getting an iron house. <laughs> hey, whoa, speaking tournament. of iron house, and I'd be cheating. You guys have like a beer fridge hand. that's already stocked there, or what? Sorry, mate, say again. Do we have free beer in the iron house? Um, there was plenty of beer in the iron house this time around, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't need that in your life, though, right? Right? The thing is, is if there's no beer, I'm not coming. Oh, well, there'll be beer. And free. Don't listen. Don't be making excuses before you even get in there. Hey, negotiations a big part of every match. Don't start making excuses. Next Look, I'm not going to start COVID. pissing and moaning about rules. I don't care about the rules. I do require beer being there, though. We have very simple rules, Evan. Don't lose. Right. <laughs> Which is a lot easier to do if there's beer. Yeah, I understand. You're very similar. You know when you said earlier tonight that you may be part Viking or part Scott. You might be part Craig Sanders. Is that the bullet? Yeah, because Craig Sanders is twice as strong when he's lit. That's a fact. Yeah, I'm like him, except, you know, the size of a full-grown man. <laughs> you don't love Craig either, then. Well, just, I can't understand a word he says. No, no, I can't. And, I mean, like, he's little and, like, yeah, I guess he's pretty good, but kind of shit still, so whatever. Don't talk yourself into a match with him as well. Oh, my God. How many of you guys do I have to beat? Lots. But, yeah, listen. Look, if I wanted easy matches, I would have asked for somebody from England, you know, Neil Pickup, Paul Maiden, Craig Sanders, like mm. one of these bumps. Yeah. I would much rather pull guys that are good, which just happens to be they're not from there. So you mean Boda, like Nanastad, these are fun matches. Think of the I don't possibilities think there, though. The UK that's any good. Think of the think of the possibilities there. I mean, it's a big risk thing for the high hookers, isn't it? 
because I'm undefeated by any high hooker. You know what I mean? So, right. You paid off a ref so you could beat Alan Ford when he was little and sucked. Good mm-hmm. for you, Neil. When I he was little and sucked. Do I don't know what he sucked to yours, mate. He this. never sucked anything of mine. Whatever you guys do in training, that's up to you guys. You know what I mean? All I remember is I've just got really vivid memories of smacking the shit out of him really easy. So if, if you came over and I similarly beat the piss out of you like that, after not training, what's going to happen then? Yeah, How well, you the only way that? that's going to happen, Neil, you do realize you're you going to shoot your face this iron house, make me pull Frodo, and then that's going to end up like a big bag of piss. I and can then, pull you first. Now I got to deal with these other dudes. Neil, you ain't pulling nobody fresh. The only thing you can pull on me is... Anyways, it's not going to happen, Neil. There's nobody in Great Britain that's any good. So just I stop. I mean, it's unlikely just that stop. it is going to happen. But Just it, stop. But it'd be funny, Ridiculous. though. I mean, Next imagine you're start a scenario. Me let's let's just play with Look, this scenario. I watched ahead. what Bradford did in his match. All I'm saying, Evan... All I'm saying is that if you come over and you train hard and I get off the couch and I smack the piss out of you, how's that going to look? Right. I mean, when you get home, you'll have to, st- you know, you've got to go out in public and stuff. Think of the size of bag you'd need to put over your head to cover that beard. People would still right, you. I also might trip when I fall up the stairs and accidentally shave my beard off. You're just talking stupid things that aren't possible. It's just, Nobody you know, trips and shaves their beard off. I'm just Neil throwing it Pickup out there. does not get his fat ass off the couch. You would have to stand backwards so you can keep your tits off the table. Yeah, no, but I mean, this is getting better and better. Because if you show up and I smack the piss out of you in round one of a four way, I mean, you'd just be beaten by an out of shit. You'd be beaten by a dude that wears an elastic waistband. Are you? I, I wear I elastic mean, waistbands. And how bad can it be for you? My shoes don't even actually connect. Like I, I'm a complete bag of shit, Neil. This you is what I do. A school I boy. get drunk. I'm I talk boy. shit. Don't even worry about who beats me. The guys that lose to me have fucking problems. <clears throat> That's how I feel. You know? But except you can't beat anybody. Apart from you. Well, Neil, now you're talking yourself right in here. Let's go. Well, it could happen. You well, know. we're going to have to make it happen. You can't just sit here and talk all this shit. You know what? Alan getting fucked over by you is one thing. And I don't care if your boy Paul Maiden is sitting there helping you load into this fucking nonsense rap. I will whoop his ass before going back to beating you. So you want a loaded, you want a loaded match start? I don't well. give a shit about the rules. I just told you, I don't care. I'm not whining about the rules. As long as there's a beer fridge that is full and I'm allowed in it, I will whoop all of your asses. I don't care, Neil. On each arm. Same time. This is going to be such a lot of fun. So we got a. Uh, we'll come back to it. Living hints for our granddads, fathers, etc. Didn't give two caps about promoting drama. Be a killer in waiting. Some folks learn the hard way. The only words that turned my head were from truth. They hurt and learn from. I have oh, no idea what you said. Okay, do you want me to read that again? Sure. Okay. See if we get it this time. Are you ready, Frodo? Because you're the intelligent one on this call. Yeah. You ready? So this is from Living <laughs> Living Hints. It's quite late for this, isn't it? Living Hints, thanks for your super chat, mate. It's Canadian, so you should understand this. You ready? Our granddads, comma, fathers, comma, etc., comma, didn't give two caps about promoting drama. Full stop. Okay, so let's keep it grammatically correct. Gotcha. Okay, are you still with me at this point? Yep. Yeah, for like another three minutes, get moving. Okay, be a killer in waiting. Full stop. Get your head around that. Some folks learn the hard way. Full stop, Evan. Still got it? Okay. The only words that turned my head were from truth. Comma. They hurt and learned from. No, I didn't get it again. Still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No, I didn't. No, I'm not. That's the bloody super chat. Look, somebody else read it. 
I you get it. Read. There was a got... super chat. You read it word for word. I don't know what he's talking about at all. Frauda. Yes. Can you read? Yeah. Okay. Go in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if this makes more sense in Norwegian. Right. Go into the chat. Living hints. I see him. Okay. You got it. Now give us a couple yeah. of seconds to get my beef jerky in shot. Now, is he going to read this in Norwegian? Yes. No. <laughs> no, go on. See if you can read out loud now. In Norwegian or? No, read it in English. <laughs> no. in an, yeah. Our granddads, fathers. No, we already read it in English twice. Do it in Norwegian. Okay. Baste for aldre. Papa, etc. Ja. Gå fan. Jag får med tera drama. Det är killa. Ja, ok. I can't uh, translate. <laughs> no. no. Well, I understood yeah, no. it just as good when you read it as I do when Neil does. Thanks, mate. Nobody in the old days cared about drama. Some people only learn when they get smacked around. I guess. Neil. Basically, what I get out of this is you're going to stop talking back if you actually get off your ass and jump into this. Where'd I got you? an idea. Go on. Let's take, you know, you don't want it left handed. Bet your ass I don't. So we'll get rid of Nana Stad left handed. Shut the right handed. No, no, we keep Donastad left-handed. We get rid of him out of the right-handed. Listen, there's a we'll bone and throw to right-handed. Me and you first round right-handed. And then we still got... Oh, we can't have Bowen in there left-handed. We need somebody else for the left. No, Bowen so. I mean, I'd probably do all right with Bowen left-handed. I beat Bowen left-handed, probably. Yeah, so would most of my kids. I could pull Bowen right-handed first. Because then it's a win-win anyway. If I crack Bowen, who clearly beat the piss out of you, it's the same thing, really. Nope. No, it mm -hmm. isn't. Neil? Mm -hmm. Yep. I am still pretty sure that after Bowen whooped your ass and Frodo and I have to get into a dirty fight, I'm still going to whoop your ass. Like, seven years, Neil. Mm. Yeah, I mean... The... And now you're stepping into, like, a men's weight class. Well, I'm in the weight. Don't worry about the weight. The weight's not a problem. No, I know. You've got your weight covered. Yeah, I'm sponsored by a motherfucking cake company, son. Don't worry. The weight's not an issue for you. No, but it's going to be for you. Because now mean, you're pulling you against a real your tight beard through, I'll still have you on weight. I mean, it's not good weight. Either way, you're going to get your ass kicked here. Nah, I'm not so sure. I don't think you win one round against any of the guys there. Except you. No, I, I didn't stutter when I said it, Neil. I meant no rounds against any of the guys there. No, but what if I do, though? I mean, it's what a if, possibility, isn't it? What if you do the eight-man, and you keep yourself on an injury reserve, mm. and you wait till the very last match and tell that guy that he's injured that's supposed to be against me? No, no, You're I still going to lose. Because if I pull you first round, you'd have, like, no excuse. And he'd be like, oh, my God, I just lost a Neil. Right, except you're not I winning a round, Neil. I wrestled in seven years, and he's 175 years old. I was going to pull schoolboy. I mean, it'd just be amazing for you. Right. And we can sit here and talk about hypotheticals all day long. Like, imagine if Devin just goes out and beats Levon 6 nothing because he's just too strong. Don't say that's a hypothetical. You'll kill people's fantasy in the chat here. You're supposed to be supporting him. Dude, I'm helping him train. I want him to do well. I just can't see how it happens. God, you got a negative attitude. I don't have a negativity issue. I have an honesty issue. Like, when I say that I'm going to whoop all of you, I mean it. Frodo cannot yeah. keep his face straight when no, you say that. No. <laughs> have you noticed every time you say... Right, Frodo, do you think I have a chance of cracking Evan? Yes. You know what, Frodo? Uh, and, I used yeah. to think that you were smart and a great arm wrestler <laughs> and everything. Now you're just a great arm wrestler. <laughs> like, you're uh, good at doing it, but you can't read shit. No. I, he can't even read in Norwegian. I'm pretty sure he was making that up. 
I, I can't will. tell because uh, I don't speak Norwegian. No, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to decipher what that meant. So we got uh, GB19 with a super chat. Thanks, mate. But Neil, will you comment King of the Table 4? I believe I will be commentating that. Yes. I think that is the case. Oh, my God. I forgot to ring Adam back. I need to ring Adam badly. Holy shit. I actually did as well. I was supposed to ring Adam Silver yesterday. And I was at the hospital a lot of the day and I completely forgot to Adam. If you were watching, I am so sorry, mate. I should have called you. Let's jump on a call tomorrow, mate. My God. I actually just remember that live. That is true. Okay. Let's have a look what we got in here. So ladies and gents, we're not going to be on here too long, about 10 minutes. And we're going to let this thing go and let Evan get on his five hour super chat. We've probably talked quite a bit of that. We'd still need number three of these at some point because we still haven't found out shit about Evan yet. That's the whole point of this thing. Right, but you keep going off on tangents, Neil. Well, you keep coming on and Stay talking. Stay on point. Shit. Listen, you come on and you'll say something and entice me into going down that way. Oh, right. It's all my you'll fault, You'll say Neil. something like, oh, so, Fatty, when's the last time you armed us? And I'll be like, seven years. And you'll say, I could come over and beat everybody. I'll be like, let's go. And then you'll get COVID and not show up, and I'll be there ready to go. I still ain't trained, you know? But if I know you're definitely going to come, I'm I'm in. Let's can go. I don't need to train for you. We'll just do it. That's I kind of like – I said this to Ryan Bowen on his live chat the other day. I said, here's a hypothetical for you, right? Let's just say I just come in off the couch and pull you completely without any training. How bad do you think you'd crack me? Do you think you could beat me really easy, like kill me? Yes. And he said, it's a good question. So I'd love to find that out. Well, then do it. Yeah, exactly. But here you go again. You're trying to find out about me on this deep inside thing. And you keep talking about you. You did make me. It is interesting. You, 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 you. Whatever, Neil. God, you're like my wife with a beard. Do you remember when you used to be good? Neither does anybody else. So either make it happen. Do you know that time when Ryan beat you that day and has played it back so many times? Imagine what you just said live on air there. If I crack you, the dude you who made right delusion to Ryan oh, Bowen will be playing that back to happened. Imagine if we all found out that narwhals were just unicorns hiding from people inside of whale bodies. Well, you know, stranger yeah. things have happened, Evan. All I know is that if we come over, it's an eight-manner, and me and you go at it first, how bad can it be? Well, at least I don't have to fight that many people that hard. And it's the same weight. What, so what, what weight do you want to come in at for that? Whatever weight you tell me to. Don't are you, start with a Are you able to go on a diet? Do you, you want to get down to 220, Neil? No, you said you did. So if you want to go at 220 and I'm 242, don't be crying on me. Well, I don't give a shit what you weigh. You're not... Neil, you kind of suck. You haven't been on a table in seven years. I'm going to whoop your ass no matter what. You you can show up at 260. I can't even disagree with what you said. Right now, I haven't been on a table seven years, and I suck. Right. right now, You've got okay. whatever, three, four, five, however many months before we do this. I'll do it tomorrow, though. But, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to take me a fuck of a lot longer than tomorrow to get there. It is. But it doesn't matter. Whenever so, we do like, it, let's set up a timeline. Well, the bloody to the next Iron House, which you've told me nothing about when. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like September. Okay. Oh Jesus, you've got so much time to train. Just get on it. Yeah, no, it's about your time to train. I I just have to cancel other matches because I this can is assure way you, cool. Evan, I won't be doing any training. I have no desire to do any training whatsoever but i don't know whether i need it i really don't listen if i was Jesus going to train Christ hard it'd you might want to stick to promoting back in shape anyway you might want to stick to promoting like is really? it okay for your brand like this match will never even make it to air you, it's just going to say evan won in a long drawn out battle just so you don't look like an idiot uh, i don't know I figure you've more chance of a looking like an idiot. I'm I guarantee you, I will look like an idiot the if, entire time. Oh my God, you'll look an idiot if you lose to if me. If there's free beer in a fridge that I could just help myself to, 
I guarantee I'm going to be an idiot the entire time. I might not even know where my pants are when I get to the ring or get to the stage there. I'm still going to whoop your ass. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to this more and more. So Carolyn Looms has just come on and said, Neil, just bend his wrist back like Bowen did. Yeah, because he did that in the match. Maybe watch the match or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you did lose to him and hook, didn't you? I gave my arm up once and just take the pin instead of trying to fight from a bad spot. I elbowed, my, elbowed fouled myself out of a match, which I had to do like 12 times because of this running foul system. Why the hell did you elbow yourself out of the I match? almost elbowed Ryan right in the face. Yeah, I saw that. I remember that thing. Right, like, Jesus. I mean... You can't foul any bigger than that. <laughs> and they weren't calling it, so I had to do it again and again and again and again. Running fouls, like, well, you, either way. And then so, the fifth match, I lost in a hook. I had absolutely nothing left. But at the very least, I did not let him win. I fought for it. I turned my body completely sideways, and I even looked away because I didn't want to watch it break when I knew I was throwing – everything against it knowing that uh it's either going to hold or break i'm not letting it go down i just kept pushing forward and mm. i thought it was going to break but it won't no you see you, your arms very well conditioned clearly well you've been pulling you're like him you've been pulling so long in the hook you've got exceptional condition in there now well between That's conditioning and mental fortitude there it is the ultimate enhancer I don't break anywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. So we've got a plan that we're working on here. You know, loose, though it is. But it's bloody interesting. So same question. If you come, I mean, what's your ideal scenario? Because either way, I want you to be absolutely comfortable. Would you rather pull me in First. a one-on-one? -on -one? Or would you rather pull a four, uh, like a four man battleground or an eight man battle? What's your yeah, ideal a four man scenario? battleground where I get you first? Right, just sounds so, incredible. What about if I crack your first round though and you fuck now? Well, then I guess I'm fucked, Neil. And I had no business being there because you got no business being there with the rest none. of the guys in there. Absolutely none. none. Right. So none. if I get my ass kicked by you in the first round, whatever. We had both no business have a beer. being on the table of Frodo in the first place. No, Neil. that's true. Let's talk about the realm of actual possibilities. In no, I outcomes. was. Really? I was. So if I crack you in the first round, right, which is probably likely, that... How do you say that with a straight face? I mean, it's because I just think... I'm How is that a right. likely scenario, Neil? It's possible. No. Yes. Right. It's possible. But it's more likely that the reason you cracked me in the first round is because I got so drunk, I fell off the stairs and broke my wrist the night before. Don't do that. But I woke up in the morning, said, well, it's game day. Let's get drunk enough to do it anyways. I mean, that's a better scenario. But right. then you'd spend okay. the rest well, of the Well, then you beat a guy with a broken wrist by attacking his hand. Good you, when you, wrist was broke. I hope you're fucking you're proud of yourself. The refs. So either way. You're going to feel stupid then if I show up with a broken wrist and you already paid the refs. You're like, fuck, I didn't need to do that. That's true. There's no Paul Maiden better stay out of my way whenever this happens, too. Who's that, me or him? I don't care. Look, I'm not Uncle John. I'm not going to let you talk to me like that. Oh, my God. Don't, I can't let you near Maiden. You're both <laughs> fucking nutters. He, he, I mean, that would be ridiculous. Yeah, I ain't letting you near Maiden. I'll have to bring in another referee like Mick Holland. Somebody sensible. You and Maiden, Jesus Christ. It's an absolute recipe for disaster. I think it sounds like fantastic fun. Yeah, after the bloody yeah. show. And like the, the, the only chance you have at winning. I don't want somebody knifing to death in the first five minutes or headbutting to death, which is, you know, those two scenarios are quite possible. There might be a choke out, a headbutt death or a knifing death in the first five minutes of the show. That is not good for any promotion. Well, I would much prefer that all competitors and referees go through a metal detector on the way to the stage. I would. Let's do that. Let's make that a thing. Because okay. uh, knifing just doesn't seem fair whenever I'm already strapped in, up to you and then you're paying your buddy to stab me. Like, that's fucked up. No, I don't want bloody Paul to stab you. Right. Well, dude, want. you're into a whole new problem then. Because now you've got my blood all over the place. Neil, not a good idea. Dado not want anything to happen to you. 
apart from obviously you lose to me. But outside of that, because that will be piss funny. It's far more likely that Paul Maiden gets all antsy and jumps than it is for you to beat me. Be be serious here. I I genuinely think there is an outside possibility that I crack your ass. And if I did, right? Oh, fucking hell. It's amazing to me. If I crack you after seven years off and no training, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's not a thing. It's not a thing, Neil. What if it's a thing? It's not a thing. It'd be good if it was a thing, though. It's not a thing. It'd be good, though, wouldn't it? Like, Look, imagine I am well aware like, of how bad this would look on me camp. if it was a thing, but it's not a thing. If it was, though. I wouldn't take the match if I thought, oh, shit, you know what? Maybe Neil could do something here and I'll look like an idiot. I'm already going to look like an idiot, but I, I don't care. There's, that's not a thing. You're not going to beat me. Oh, it'd be good if it was a thing. Can you imagine the conversations you and Alan would have with the violins and shit? I mean, the violins wouldn't even be able to play for laughing. It'd be fucking awesome, wouldn't it? Night at the High Hookers Neil. group. Neil, get off it. Oh, it's God, it'd be good. Froda. How bad do you think I get leathered if I pulled him fresh? Just no training. I'll legitimately say no training. Just come in. And You're not going to pick up a weight. Off. You're not going to step to a tail. I'm not sure how 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 much uh, have you pulled the, with the a no load before before the go, Evan. I mean, like, we've always pulled under WAF rules here. He thinks I load. Yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah, do but, I load? I don't. No. No, well, no. you did when you paid the ref for it. Never load. <laughs> Froder will tell you categorically, I don't load. No. It's not the uh, thing. Uh, right. But it, you're going to... Neil's a tricky bastard to pull. I don't care. He's old, fat, slow, and not very strong. I don't care if he loads or not. All of those were true. <laughs> I mean, all of them are true. Which makes it... I mean, it's amazing. Where would you yeah. bet if you had a hundred dollars, brother? Right, a oh. hundred. Where would you bet? Do you think I'm gonna get beat? Or would you? Where'd you put it? Is it six it's... and eleven? Is no. it no four two Evan? I don't know. It's 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 hard because I don't know either uh, of your strength levels now. So, like last time I felt you was in 2014. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, Evan, uh, I have no idea. Uh, and I was so... retired then. Yeah, <laughs> legit. I was retired then. So, yeah, but, but then you were strong, <laughs> and um, yeah, hard to pick. Hard to pick. Be amazing, wouldn't it? I think. Yeah, I think you would be surprised, Evan. Be good fun. Just ridiculous. We got to do this, Evan. You know what? Worst case scenario, should. I get right. your old fat ass off the couch and actually at a table. I mean, that in itself's a win. I mean, no, I'm not going to train though. But I'd come back to that. I can't be asked. But well, the thing is, is Alan's going to pay for my flight if I whoop your ass as soon as I get there. It'd be funny as balls if I won. I I feel like doing this just so the the long shot that I win that match. Sets up so much fun at the high hookers. I mean, I wouldn't need to do shit. I wouldn't need to come on here and give you aggravation. I really like you. But if... Neil, I would lose respect for you as a man and human being if you did pull this off and didn't come on here and give me shit for it. Evan, I can tell you, mate, I would not need to do that. Because you're... You, listen, your your whole team would be on the phone saying... Oh, my God, Evan. Neil, I would put my beard on the line. <laughs> It'd be amazing. You'd look like a thumb, too. I look like a fat Caillou, and if nobody knows who Caillou is, you need to look that kid up. I hate that kid. It'd be amazing if I won. I it would put would my be beard the on the line, thing. Neil. You're not winning. What if I win? I will shave it off on the stage for your cameras. Oh, my God. Let's can go but what are you putting up here absolutely cool wow this beard's got to be worth at least something no what but listen i'm i'm all about minimal Look, i'm not saying you got to put up something of equal value i understand there's got to be odds involved no but listen it's minimal i'm all about minimal effort i am literally not gonna train 
I would walk into the show, set up the show, do everything that we're going to do with the show. You'll well, see yeah, how stressed it's running around. I am. The parameters here. But pull anyway. And if I crack you in the first round, it kind of hurts me because I don't want you to lose. I'd be beating your ass thinking, oh, my God, I'm beating the bum. I mean, it'd be terrible because really I want to put you in with Froda. But if I'm smacking the piss out of you, I'd be like, no, I can't put you with Froda. Right. Well, at least we found out, hey, the Froda match was a bad idea. Bad idea. You yeah. need to pull fat old people like me. Right. We should do it's, it. It's perfect. Yeah, It's perfect. I think so. Let's fucking go. Is it set or what? Man, sort it out. I'm in. Like, I'm not going to back down from anything. I don't I care. Like you. I think. I mean, I have no idea this was coming, but I think it's brilliant because when you get back, I, I am just a bag full of great ideas. Alan Ford will be like, "I told you that fat mother was strong." No, Alan has never said that. No, of course he's not said that. He's still crying. Alan actually told me, he's like, dude, you should go whoop Neil's ass for me. Oh, my God. he won't God, pull me awesome. again because he knows better. So if I smack you, listen, can you do anything with Alan? Yeah. So you'd beat Alan? Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Seriously, you beat Alan right-handed. In competition? Yeah. I don't, I don't think Alan and I have pulled in competition since... I was any good. And you're, are you at your best now? Yes. Okay. This is the best thing ever. So you're at your absolute peak now. Well, not today, but uh, I think two and a half weeks from today is going to be the best I've ever been. Oh, this is all. Awesome. So if you're given, so a couple of months, you're going to be much stronger than that. I keep going forward. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, I take, uh, like, sabbaticals where I don't bother training real hard if I don't have a match coming up. But don't do I'm that. I'm always training. I'm mm -hmm. always training. I'm just not focused on peaking for a specific event. Do you need Alan right? to ref? No. No. That will be good. Though. I want whoever was refing for the Allen match. Who was it? I can't remember. Alan probably remember Bill Collins. Alan to Bill Collins? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want Bill Collins then. Yeah, it's Bill Collins. Well, if he's the one that's going to push back into your load, then yes, I want him. Okay. That load, that non-existent load that you'll find out real quick it don't exist. Right, and you're going to find out real quick that I do load. Yeah, that's okay. I, mate, every Russian loads. I'm happy with load. I can do load. All over your face. <laughs> <laughs> and tits. And all I can say is this, mate. The conversations between you and Alan, you must record afterwards. I will actually start taking recordings of conversations between Alan and I. Please do. Just send them to you. It's the best thing ever, this. Right. And if you don't post them afterwards, I will. <laughs> It'd be amazing. I, for the way I see this, I can't lose because I know I'm shit now. Right. But if I come in and crack, it's like somebody saying, I'll tell you what, you can pull this guy. And if you crack him, I'm not even worried about, I don't even want to win that much. I just would like to hear the conversation between you and Alan when you Oh my get God, back just the there. odds are so astronomical here, Neil. Like you were just taking the worst what if scenarios you could. It's mm -hmm. like going into the store, seeing somebody check their lottery ticket. Yep. Oh shit, it's a loser. Rip it in half, throw it out. Then you mm -hmm. go into the garbage, pick it up, tape it back together, check it again, and all of a sudden you're rich. Mm hmm. It's not going to fucking happen. Yeah, but it might. No. Listen, I feel like you're the pessimistic one here. I feel no, like I'm I... realistic. I told you. I don't lie about it. No. I'm just brutally honest. And it's not my fault that you are that shit. No, it's my fault. I know but... you used to be good, Neil. Neil, yeah. get it. You used to be good. None of that you're matters, like though. That like, was pretty decent in high school football. But now he put on 400 pounds and he sits in his armchair saying, oh, if I was in the Super Bowl, I would have done this and I would have won. No, Neil, you're fat. You're old. You suck. You're not fast. Like everything that made you good is gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm still going to beat you. And I'm going to look absolutely stupid for like three months while I try to grow. Oh, this so much longer. 
I mean, on your like I, epitaph, I you'll say something man. like, Here lies Evan Burgoyne. And yes, that really happened. It will be amazing. Yeah, if somehow it happens, it's going to be worse than the Bowen loss. Listen, don't piss on the fantasy, okay? I know you're always talking about the reality, but the whole well, my fantasy like always include a lot of pissing. Listen, it's like a little ray of sunshine. That hope, that hope springs eternal, Evan. And there is just the chance. Look, Frodo might put 50p on me. Will it be a shutout stake? That's the interesting thing. Will it get on? Will it be a shutout stake? Will people say, look, if the fat lad wins one now in this condition, that old? Only the first Untrained. one's the only one that matters. Against a prime Evan Burgoyne? Like the first Corbin. one's the only one that matters, mm -hmm. right? Say again. The first round's the only one that matters. Well, if it's a shutout stake. Well, then the first four matter. Yeah, but what about if I just get a bite on you at some point in the match? Because I guarantee you, if we pull and I will hit you six different ways. Right. And every one of them is going to involve your arm just falling over. Okay. On Here's the problem. Yours. Is I'm big and strong. You're big and fat. Uh, yeah. You're not strong. And you're not even fast anymore. I've watched you try to stand up out of your chair. Jesus, it looks like a struggle. Let's have a look. Okay, that's also true. Right. I just don't see any way that you can get anything done in this match, Neil. Look, I and I love you. Don't get me wrong. I think you are fantastic for the sport. You do all sorts of cool things, like putting together good matches, like me and Froda. Yep. Except you're trying to throw yourself in here. What no, kind of pompous ass smaller. are you? Listen, How full of yourself are you like to think that you dog. belong in this? Listen, all I'm saying don't is... Don't get me wrong. Way. I'm not trying to talk you out of this. I no, don't, don't know. Anything. This is it amazing. Can't it can't be taught. This is an incredible thing. I mean, for you, it'd be awesome. No, it's all downside for me. No the only downside is I get to whoop the, your ass. That's it. Everything else is downside. downside. I get right? given a buy downside. when Frodo has to go pull an actual arm wrestler. So then... The biggest downside is if I lose to Froda after whooping you easily and he had to fight a bit and mm. now I lose to Froda in the finals like because he's like actually good. Now it's like, oh, OK, well, Evan's not that good. There's all downside. There's all risk on my end. Mm -hmm. The only reward is that I get to shut your fat, stupid face. Which probably won't even happen. You don't shut up. You're as bad as I am. There's no chance that I'll show up. Right. Because these words will echo loud as you hold the plane. You know what else sucks, there. Neil? We are well, over Devin. our time and over my allotted beer limit. Mm -hmm. So now I need to go back to the beer store before my life. I'll tell you what, Evan. This has been an absolutely remarkable hour and whatever the we've been on. And all like, oh, we just had another super chat coming. Let me know this over. Let's have a look. Here we go. Carolyn Looms with a super chat. She's put Evan. What the fuck, Captain Carolyn? Obvious says you only travel by covered wagon. Here we I'm go. I'm probably going to drown in that covered wagon on the way there. Ron, Roger Kangingham, my dude. And he's put, Neil, I'm going to need a piece of that beard for some trout spinners. Hashtag finally. You got that, Roger. Yeah, he wants to cut just a little snippet off so he can make some lures. Well, there's going to be a lot of it on camera getting cut off when I beat the piss out of this dude. Oh, my God, Neil. Okay, just stop. Seriously, we got to get through these chats. I mean, mate, it's so funny to me. So, Phil Woody UK, whoever loses the first match has to do a 24-hour podcast. That's a physical impossibility for me. I'm too old. Um... 24 hours. I don't, there's no way do? that uh, I'll do it as on your channel, but not on mine. Mate, I can't be doing no 24 hours. Oh, you don't have to be there. You can just fuck off and go to sleep. I'll, I, I'll stay going. There's just, nothing uh, I could do for 24. You're going to wake up to your channel being 24 banned, hours. All. I mean, I'll try. 24 hours of drinking guaranteed oh, your channel I, shut off. I couldn't do 24 hours. So Carolyn Looms has come on here with the soup chat. Carolyn, love you. She's put. Neil, you look ripped as hell compared to Evan. So, I'm just saying. How does that even work? Look how fat your face is. That's frig. I mean, it is, isn't it? I mean, yours is fat too, but it's covered by a beard. 
for a reason. And it's not because my face is fat. It's because I don't have a chin. Do you not have a chin at all? Yeah, I lost mine like 96, I think it was. No, well, that's why I grow the beard. People try to punch me, and it's just like... Well, right they don't the know beard. where they're hitting. They just miss. Dude, my chin's way in there. But I'll know exactly where I'm hitting because you load. Yeah. Right oh onto my. your face. God, this is... You are in so much trouble. Oh my God, Neil, you need to stop talking. No, you're going to lose all credibility. Also, um, can we just take a second here to tell Frodo to shut the fuck up? We're trying to talk. Oh, <laughs> he bastard. He yeah. sat there shouting off. He hasn't answered where how much money he'd put on it yet and where he'd bet. I mean, people are going to want to know this stuff. Listen, Frodo. Well, Frodo, you, you just take into consideration in that Neil keeps going off on what ifs and one of us is actually strong. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> How strong are you? Well, strong enough that I think I can beat you. We'll see, but uh, strong enough to beat Neil? <laughs> no, right, because uh, I think Neil is deserving of being in a conversation about a match with you. That's Neil's You're tricky, either overestimating tricky. or underestimating something a great deal here, and I'm not sure which. Because I can't uh, tell if that grin, what it's hiding. Like, are you actually really <laughs> intelligent, or are you just sitting there all confused and like, oh, I don't give a fuck. I'm sitting here imagining two guys twiddling their thumbs together all day to see who can do it faster. Like, what is going on in there? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm intrigued by the match. I, I try to... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that answer sorted out none of my questions. No. <laughs> this is, it's a lot of fun, this fraud. Yeah. It's a lot it's, of fun. I mean, this is well, like when the betting that. line comes out, Neil, we're going to have to send him that money and uh, force if him it, to put it somewhere. All right. So if you put it uh, as a It's shout not out. even your money. You got to bet somebody else's money. Where's it going? Make a choice. I think you would win. Uh, shout out stakes. Neil's not allowed that, to win that, one round. Then Neil. Oh my God! I thought you were actually onto something. Nope, mm -hmm. that is a very confused smile. He has no clue what's up. <laughs> you don't actually watch anything about your competitors, do you? When I there's do. talk about me and you pulling, you didn't even bother looking to see who I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, not it was before, very clear before... whenever you said Neil's going to win a round that you haven't mm. looked it up. Because if you had, your answer would have been different. I watched your match with uh, Ryan Bowen. Ryan Bowen. That is the <laughs> one match that I want everybody that is looking at pulling me to watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't look uh, at any of the other ones. I will be watch ev watching every, every one of them. But as of now, only, only the one with Bowen. No, that's actually the best I've ever done in my life. Um, I was definitely fit. I did not weigh 295 pounds, which is the highest competitive weight I've ever been at. I was not fat as shit without a beard and sober. None of that is relevant. I had my very best match of my life against Ryan Bowen. Don't even bother watching any others. <laughs> Neil, yeah. thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure listening to you talk about yourself for the last two hours. Pretty much. Dick bag. Bastard. Listen, all I know is <clears throat> you just we'll we'll arrange your day, you get yourself on that flight. Make sure you come with your beard as long as it possibly can be. I'm gonna work on getting a beer sponsor for you so you're nicely lit. Are your absolute strongest? I will make sure that I train less than I do now. I'll even like get my wife to carry me up five of the stairs to the top. So I'm in really terrible shape for you. Just you need to get chance. yourself a reverse enema where they actually plug 10 pounds of shit into you. See that's So you can be a bigger sack of shit for the match. <laughs> <clears throat> then you know you, what? You've got to talk to Sometimes your friend, Sometimes I impress Devin. myself with how fun some of these things are to say. It is a quite, you know, it's a unique angle. It's not one I've ever been given on the show before. But, you know, it's less appealing than some you've said. But we go with it. So... And then we're going to go first round, possibly in a four-man, possibly in an eight-man. And basically, 
you're just going to hear these words as you get back on the plane ringing in your ears as you're going back to Alan. And it'll sound a little like this. I'm the winner. I'm the winner. Oh, it's going to be fantastic having everybody text me that you should have just pulled Bowen again. <laughs> Mate, it'll be terrible. I promise you, though, Evan, don't we let that Bowen thing get you down because I will not post this again and again and again. If I crack you, I right. won't do that. I wouldn't do that. I like you. Know that inside I'd be weeping. You because don't I make think, any oh sense, Neil. God, I brought this guy over to build his brand. Neil, I will get right back onto the show and talk shit, and I will flat out lie to you until you do post it again and again. I don't care. <laughs> Evan, but are we going to redo this and we can actually talk about me a little? Yeah, we are going to redo it again. Okay. <clears throat> are you How not excited to see what new matches I talk myself into? Yeah. When you came on here tonight, you didn't plan on pulling me. Listen, don't feel pressure that you have to do, you know? Right, Neil. But we've got to do it. Everything's accidental. I don't think anything through. It's awesome. I'm actually that much of a genius on the spot. Think think how much trouble I could get myself in here. I don't know whether I can complete one arm wrestling match. And after I smack the piss out of you, I might have to pull him. Right, because Bowen's going to beat him. Oh, God, wouldn't it be good if I got Bowen? Can you imagine if I cracked you and then got through to Bowen and beat him? Right. Can we not bring Alan Ford over so I might be able to crack that bastard after you? Yes. That'd be good. So it'd be like a leather you, then him. Why don't we just throw John Milne, BLM? No, I like John Milne. Eric but I can't Hussain. beat BLM. Let's just fill it full of high hookers for I don't it. think I can beat BLM. Well, there's a difference between you and me. Yeah. Well, that you can beat him and I can't. Right. Yeah, but the funny thing is, styles make matches, and I think I've got your style, and I think I kick your fucking ass. So, well, Neil, you know, thinking's not your greatest thing. You never know. It just could you're be. far better at talking. Yeah, don't worry, I'll talk you through it. Each match, I'll be like, "There's one, there's two. That one's called three. Oh my god! Wait, wait, what was one again? One was this, and two was. Where was three? Well, you got two and three backwards, but none of those ways are going to work. Oh, my God. That's a possibility. That okay, none of seriously, them work. Neil, you've got to rethink your game plan. If you're not going to train for the next six months, at the very you, least, I put some thought into this. I would like your shoulder to stay attached. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll be I mean, fine. I'm not. It's just... Yeah, it won't like be a problem. Squishy sound. Listen, it won't be a problem. That if you try to come at me this way, mm -hmm. we're going to hear some very disgusting noises coming out of your body. No, what? Like, I'm the winner. I would also find that disgusting. I know. But no, that is not the sound that I'm anticipating if you try <laughs> that shit on me. It could. No, you won't be anticipating anything, but it will happen. But the funny thing is, Alan wasn't anticipating it. Listen, Can you do me a favor, Neil? Over and said, Can we get some, like, Male hair dye and just like cover up those spots. What the so gray. it looks like I'm beating a younger Neil. Yeah, you. Yeah, we need to do that. I'll tell you what. I'll get. I'll get. I'm not going to look good by beating this old fat man. We'll get yeah, you like a muscle suit or something. I'll try. We'll like change your hair color so you look. I'll dye. I'll dye these out so I look a little younger, and I'll maybe wear like Frodo's face on mine, like in a mask, just so you don't feel so bad. <laughs> Can you wear a Mike Gould face? I could probably pull that off. Oh, that's hot. I love that guy. It's quite good. <laughs> who are like your guy? Who, if I had to like, you know, in each round. I'm just saying, who doesn't want to walk around Mike. being Mike Gould for a day? So let, let's let's focus on things here. So wait a minute. Corey Bresden, this is another guy who loves you. He's put, I wish I was as good as Evan. We know. When are you pulling him? I'm not. Why? Well, because he's a fat asshole. <laughs> no, I want to pull Corey, but that thing just got all fucked around. The PAO, it took too long to uh, actually schedule the match for sure. Yeah. And flights went from $300 to like $1,600. Holy 
right. I, I'm. I want to pull Corey, but I don't want to pull Corey sixteen hundred dollars bad. Yeah, no, that's coming out of my pocket. Make up that you've got COVID. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I'm just going to tell you why it didn't happen. It's because sixteen hundred dollars is uh, not something I'm willing to do to go to Vegas to pull Corey. No, I can drive no. there for like three hundred dollars anytime I want. It's I can drive there in eight hours. Jesus, why would I pay seven or sixteen hundred dollars to fly to Vegas to pull them? But it's a match that could happen down the tracks. Uh, we're trying to plan it for over the summer. So Corey's dad has a beautiful dog that he would like to breed with uh, my buddy's dog. Okay. And uh, so Tim said, like, he'll pay our travel costs and everything to set up the breeding, like, for the breeding fee, mm -hmm. for the stud fee. And uh, we're just going to go hang out. I'll pull the super match with Corey. They can have whoever they want ref. I think he wants uh, Ron Klemba refing. Okay. And uh, we'll just go there and get that done. Sounds like a plan to me, mate. This has been an insightful evening, Evan Bourgoin. Every time you come on this show, weird things happen. Right. Like Froda talking too much and nobody can get a <laughs> fucking word in. We always have that problem with Froda. So noisy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got a supporter, though, just before you go. I want to cheer you up. Jared Theriel. And he's put Evan. Rip everyone's arm off, my dude. Ideally not mine. Is that John Terrian? It's uh, Jared Theriot. Oh, I don't know who that is. He, he loves you. Well, good. Everybody should love me. And he wants you He wants you to rip my arm off. Well, that's an inevitability. I mean, ideally not off. I would rather stay attached, so I would. rethink your game plan. Mm -hmm. But uh, rather than that, look, I would love to stay and chat. We went half an hour over. My kids are getting hungry, and... I have got some fantastic steaks sitting there waiting for me to cook. Evan Burgoyne, enjoy your day. Frodo Hoagland, enjoy your good, day. Good night. <laughs> also, hard, Evan. I'll be live in like an hour and a half on my channel. So Lovely darts. Guys, get over to Evan Burgoyne's channel, Beers with Bad Company. Tune in. Check it out. Let's go. Put it in the description, Neil, you asshole. I'll try my best. And you learned to fucking write. And ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time here on Supernatural Strength, please like, share, and subscribe. Get yourself over to armwrestlingforums.com and you can talk all night about the slim potential that with no training, I crack the shit out of them. There is nothing slim about you, Neil. Also true. But believers keep on believing. Good night, motherfuckers. Keep on believing.